Now we have a channel input and output routed, let's look at the different output channels. All the group, aux, master and matrix outputs have the same processing as the input channels. This means, in a lot of cases, no further processing needs to be inserted into the bus output signal path. On the work surface, you will note some fader banks are labelled as GRP, AUX, Matrix and CG. These will normally be found on a standard session spread across both the left and the right third fader bank buttons. Let's look at group and master output buses first. Please press the red group bank button and then select screen assign. The screen should now show the group bus outputs. These are displayed as red channel strips. The master bus will also be located here, either as the first stereo bus or an LCR master. Assigning the processing controls is done in the same way as the input channel. This includes all the EQ and dynamics assignment. If you press the bottom of the strip on screen, it will expand the output routing panel. This allows you to select the physical output for bus or route the assigned group bus directly to other group buses. Moving to the AUX output strips is as simple as selecting the correct fader bank button, not forgetting to reassign the screen view if required. The AUX output channels are purple in color. Again, these have the same processing as the input channels and the assignment procedure is the same. Pressing the top of the on-screen AUX channel display will expand some options of the assigned auxiliary bus. You have the ability to copy the settings from another AUX bus directly to this bus and a one-button way of globally changing the AUX bus to be either pre-fader, pre-fader post-mute or post-fade. If you press the bottom of the strip on screen, it will expand the output routing panel. This allows you to select the physical output for bus or route an insert point on the bus output. This insert point could be used for inserting one of the internal graphic EQs or routing to an external processor. If you would like to use one of our onboard effects units but have not built any in the onboard effects rack, you can simply press effects output. This will then allow you to create the desired effects from the available effects library. This will perform all the output routing and build the effects unit both on the output bus and the effects rack. You will need to route the FX return into the channel. This is done by going to the desired input channel bank and routing the input in the normal way. Again, the FX are located as internal signals under the FX routing option. We don't cover the output matrix in this section, but an explanation on this can be found in the master screen section. We will, though, look at simple CG or VCA assignment. CG stands for control group, and it is no more than a digital VCA. Select the CG fader bank and then press the appropriate LCD function button to open the LCD menu options. The display above fader number 4 should indicate Join CG. Press the button beneath this option. In the display, now it will say the CG numbers and underneath Join CG. Press the button for the desired CG. Let's say CG1. And now, all the input channel LCDs will say Join CG1. Pressing the channel select button on the required channels will assign them to being members of CG1. You can assign across banks as required. 
More CG options are explained in the Master section. All Digico consoles come with dual solo buses. These make it convenient to mix monitors to both wedges and in-ears accurately. They can also offer some great flexibility for front-of-house monitoring. Let's first look at how you can select between two solo buses. Select the AUX output fader bank to the work surface. Press the appropriate LCD function button and the display above fader number 2 should now say Solo Choice. Pressing the button beneath this display will toggle between the following options. Solo 1 Solo 2 Solo 1 and 2 The Solo Bus assignment can be altered on all channels and bus outputs to offer user flexibility. It is also possible to select some options for each solo bus on the console and your monitor preferences. Select the master screen by pressing master screen. You will notice a solo option at the top of the screen. Pressing this will open up a solo setup panel for solo 1 and solo 2. Not all the options are covered in this section, just the ones to get you started. Multi-mode. This allows multiple solos to be pressed at any one time. Single mode. In this mode, only one solo can be assigned at any one time. When the next solo is pressed, it will automatically cancel the previous solo. No solo. This allows you to select the signal that is routed to the solo output when no solo buttons are selected. This could be the master bus or maybe the lead singer's aux bus. Headphones. This routes the solo bus to the headphone output. There is a dedicated section of the work surface allocated to the solo buses. Located on the surface are some of the solo options as well as a dedicated trim control for solo one output. The second rotary in this section is default set to a master bus trim. This, however, can be allocated to the Solo 2 trim if preferred. This is performed in the Solo 2 panel by pressing the Assign to Master level. On the work surface, there is a clear LED indication showing the current function of the rotary. Solo in place. This is switched on the work surface by pressing and holding in the SIP button on the work surface solo section. This completes the getting started section of the program and you should now be confident of getting signals in and more importantly out of your SD9. Please take some time to have a practice with the assignment and speed of getting around the work surface. There is a lot more flexibility and power in the console than is covered in this section but details on these are explained later on.